siento así. Dile a Indica. Ya me anguilí ni se quede. Vengo a la tupa. Pain, disappointment and heartbreaks is all she got when she needed love care and support. This woman's husband disappeared on their wedding day. Yes, when everything was in place, he just disappeared out of the blue. And up to this day, no one knows where the husband is. Weddings are normally happy events that mark the beginning of something special. But for this woman, it went otherwise, and she has been suffering ever since and struggling to raise her children alone. Even up to this day, she can't believe what happened to her, as one can think that it's a story straight out of Hollywood. Sasa kitu ilikuwa inani iranipea furaha kabisa. Nimepata yani mwanaume mwenye ni askari. Nenda kwa nyumba ya kuosha. So what exactly happened? How would a man spend his time planning for his best day ever and then disappear on his wedding day? We visit this woman who normally doesn't talk about her story because it brings back the memories and the pain as she starts crying even before saying a single word. This is her painful story. Manjala. My name is Mitrine Manjala. I had a challenging upbringing since I lost my parents at an early age. I met a man whom I thought would provide the parental care that I never received, but I was wrong. After giving birth to two children, it became clear that the marriage was very abusive and difficult. This left me in tears, and I decided to part ways with him and move to Nairobi. Church was never a significant part of my life. I started selling beer for someone and eventually met a young lady. We decided to live together. She was a lawyer and helped me put my daughter in daycare as I had left my son back in the village. Life in Nairobi was not as glamorous as she had imagined. Although she was able to provide for her children and pay some bills, she still struggled. However, everything changed when she became a drunkard and neglected her children. She would spend all her money on beer and forget about her other responsibilities. I started experiencing difficulties in buying food and was unable to pay the rent. It dawned on me that I was jeopardizing my own life. I had made a commitment to myself to not return to the father of my children. As a result, I made the decision to quit working at a bar and instead took up casual jobs, washing other people's clothes. My daughter had just started primary school so I left our house and rented a different one. With the increase in expenses, life became even more challenging. However, I had made a promise to myself to keep pushing forward. One evening, her life was about to change when she walked by and saw a congregation gathered at a church. Without thinking twice, she entered, and her life has never been the same since. <laughs> In my life, I never imagined that one day I would find myself in a church. However, some unknown force compelled me to step inside. Upon arrival, the pastor called upon those who wished to receive Christ. It was evident from my appearance that I was in a state of distress and confusion. As it was raining outside, I shared more details about my life with the pastor. Remarkably, he embraced me as a caring parent would and introduced me to individuals who could offer guidance on my journey towards faith. When I found myself without food, the church provided assistance by offering meals and even financial aid for my children's school fees in case I was unable to pay. With a warm welcome, she found herself in the right place. She joined a choir and her life took a slight turn for the better. She was no longer stressed and worried about life it was the first time she felt appreciated and supported by people around her. Then, someone she thought was special, as if sent by the heavens, entered her life. I met a man on Facebook. He used to text me frequently, even when I did not reply. I would find messages from him, 
telling me that he was a soldier with a high rank. He would also show me pictures of a beautiful villa he had built, which seemed like a dream compared to the life I had experienced. However, he didn't just want to date me. He wanted to get married. He was incredibly charming and polite. He spoke with such conviction and kindness. He even asked me to take him to church. And when I did, everyone there trusted him because of his sweet tongue and generous donations to the pastor. This made him seem reliable and generous, and I thought I had found the perfect partner. He was meticulous in building trust, visiting often and always showing respect. Despite her disclosure of having two children, he promised to marry her, apparently unfazed by this information. However, behind his charming facade, there seemed to be a hidden agenda. He was always so convincing. Whenever he asked for money, he would say it was for our wedding preparations. He also explained to me that he had taken out a loan from the bank to build our future home, which we would share once we got married. He assured me that all his payments were going directly towards paying off the loan, which made perfect sense to me. I never questioned him because I truly believed in our future together. To further solidify his credibility, I introduced him to our pastor, who also admired his personality. I thought to myself, there's no way someone who deceives the pastor could be dishonest. He even showed me pictures of our home and painted a picture of the happy, luxurious life we would have together. As I had no parents to seek guidance from, I brought him to meet my aunt, who also approved of him. However, when he arrived at my aunt's house, he claimed that he had forgotten his wallet at home and asked us for some money to cover the cost of the bike he had brought. Desperate, we had to sell some of our crops to come up with the money. I tried to explain to my aunt why it wasn't a big deal and she seemed convinced. Little did I know, I should have paid much closer attention to this red flag. With a heart full of hope, this woman began preparing for her big day. The man had convinced her that he would ensure her children attended good schools and that they would live a better life. One night, during the preparations, they slept together and she ended up getting pregnant. The man assured her that everything would be okay and that she had his full support. He promised my pastor that he would never abandon me, explaining that he wanted a simple wedding due to financial constraints. However, during the preparations, he frequently asked me to borrow money from friends. He assured me that he would return the money within a few hours, but he never did. As a result, I was left struggling and suffering, trying to repay the debts on my own, or even changing my routine to avoid the people I owed money to. He always had a way of convincing me. A few days before the wedding, he told me to borrow money, purchase supplies, and invite the entire village to what I believed would be the happiest day of my life. I was filled with excitement. I went to the shops, bought food and drinks, and even rented a tent. My friends and family were there, assisting me with everything. I ended up borrowing a lot of money because I wanted everything to be perfect. I was so focused on creating a beautiful day that I failed to see the warning signs. Finally, the day of the wedding arrived. Everything was in place as we went to the church. The choir sang beautifully. However, as the hours passed, it became increasingly evident that something was terribly wrong. People started arriving, but my husband was nowhere to be seen. I had been calling him since 7 a.m., and each time he assured me he was on his way. Hours passed by, and he mentioned that the car had a problem but also that they were waiting for someone. Lastly, he said they had run out of fuel and the pastor had used the church's offering to send some, hoping that the situation would be resolved soon. As time went on from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. to 5 p.m., everyone was still waiting for him and guests eventually started leaving. With every passing minute, my heart broke a little more. I had never felt so alone and humiliated in my life. Her husband was not coming. He had deceived her, turning off his phones and leaving her to deal with the aftermath. It felt like my world had crumbled. I was burdened with a significant amount of debt and overwhelmed with sorrow. My family and friends were disappointed and some directed their anger towards me. 
labeling me as foolish for trusting him. I had never felt such shame and betrayal. The weeks and months that followed were a nightmare. She was left to pick up the pieces, dealing with debt collectors and the judgment of her community. It was very difficult. I worked hard to pay off my debts. In the midst of this chaos, my third child was born and I had to stay strong for him. However, the community's judgment was harsh and I felt isolated as people laughed at me. The only person who supported me was my pastor. Although I enjoyed watching movies, little did I know that one day I would be the star of my own real life film. Today, she owes a lot of money. She is unemployed and has to take care of her newest baby and her other two children, who require school fees and basic necessities to survive. This is incredibly challenging for her. What my husband did made me hate all men. Imagine someone deceiving me in front of my pastor. Each day is a struggle. The debts remain and the pain of betrayal lingers. Now I'm struggling to feed and raise my children. I can't afford rent, and people are always pressuring me about the debts that the man trapped me in. So I would like to ask any good Samaritan here to help me pay off the debts and also provide me with capital so that I can pay for my children's school fees, rent, and support my entire family. Let's help this mother out of shame and provide her with the money she needs to clear debts and even survive by contributing on givinglife.com. You can find the links in the description and pinned in the top comments. Despite the hardships she's faced, she remains hopeful for the future, determined to create a life filled with joy, love, and new beginnings. Thank you for watching. I am Simon Greenwood, and this is Aframax English. Please remember to subscribe.